I am loving this cast. Like, I'm so excited to get the game going. Like, like I said, like, I see a lot of really funny people here. Like, the vibes are just, like, emitting this, like, humorous energy. And, like, laughter is truly the key to my heart. So, like, I want to work with so many people here. So, I'm kind of nervous because it's like, I don't want to vote you off. I don't want to vote you off. I don't want to vote you off. Like, I just want to hang out with y'all. So, we'll see what happens. But really really good vibes there's a couple people i think who are like kind of like seems like they're playing a little too hard too early by like really trying to like make eye contact with everybody kind of thing so like besides that like i'm really excited i think it's going to be a great cast and a lot of really fun friendly funny people i think the big elephant in the room uh is a big bald guy named bruce um you know he's someone that i've had my eyes on and uh, he reminds me a lot of my dad just from like his mannerism. So I think, you know, he's someone that I would really look forward to working with and it'd be interesting to see, you know, what he's got in the tank since uh, we didn't get to witness it last time. I also think that there's this huge guy, you know, he's got like this faux hawk going on, super muscular. Um, I've been calling him tank in my head because that's just like the vibe that he gives me. And um, I think that he would be really cool to work with, but also uh, he eats so much food that it might be hard to keep him, uh, you know, energized. Also, there's a guy, he's got like this poofy hair, a little bit of facial hair, got like this swag walk that he does sometimes. And, um, you know, I think that he would be a really cool person to work with. He gives me, you know, a lot of good eye contact, a lot of smiles. Although what I've noticed is that he seems to be doing that a lot with everybody. So, you know, if I already feel like he's my number one, other people probably think the same thing. So he's going to be high on my radar. Being a fan for so long and it's being in the environment like I'm with a survivor cast, right? I'm with 17 people who went through this process who were, you know, picked from hundreds, thousands of others who are here for a reason, right? And I can see the reasons. There's a there's a guy here, he's got an afro, he's got a beautiful, bright smile. He's always smiling at everybody and everybody is smiling back at this guy. This guy's gonna win. Like, I, I hope I win. I really hope that I take the end of this thing. But if not, he's my winner pick. And if you're listening to this, he should probably be yours also. I think in looking at the cast right now, we've had a couple of years in a row, a couple of seasons in a row of women being voted out first. Uh, my bold prediction is that there will be there'll be a couple of men that will be voted out before the women. And it's not gonna be me though. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna fight hard as hell to make sure that doesn't happen. But uh, I can see that you know the the ladies in this cast they look very strong. As far as the other contestants, I think this is gonna be a really good season. Like I I see that there's gonna be some big personalities here, and and I'm excited to to like to meet to meet them and talk with them like we're just here i can tell that people just want to unleash already and like i can tell that there's going to be a lot of funny people on this season like this is going to be a fun season to watch so i'm excited i'm really excited like i i know that a lot of the relationships that are going to be built here on this season are going to go way past survivor my temptation is to say that this is a good cast for me in which i'm sure i will regret when i'm like first boot or something but there are a lot of people who i see and preliminarily i'd love to work with there's a, a little bit of a nerdier girl who's been playing, you know, Pokemon the whole time. Like, oh my God, you know, I, I played Pokemon competitively for a time. Like you, you, you're ideal. Um, I, I recognize, I don't know spoilers, but I recognize a familiar face possibly returning. Uh, I know that he's an upstanding guy, very, you know, positive. He's a background that, that you know, my similar to my stepfather in a lot of ways and so i say oh my god this is like you know this is another great connection i could have i mean there are there are really a lot of people i like there's like an extremely buff um young asian guy he's got long hair that's somebody i pick out and say like like we would make a perfect team you know i think we really complement each other's strengths there are really not many people i look at on this cast and squint at my first impression of the cast is actually how normal everybody looked. Everybody seemed kind of average to me. Um, I remember thinking this might be kind of a boring season uh, because everybody just didn't strike me as overly interesting. And as I've sat here with them for a few more days, I think that um, that initial impression may be wrong. But there are a couple people that, you know, you can already tell that you're kind of hitting it off. The vibes are right. Um, there's a guy with long hair, a bit of a beard. Um, I think he wears glasses. and. I just feel like on some maybe nerd level, we connect. Now, I feel bad saying that. I have no idea if he's a nerd or not. Um, so he'd probably get out here and he may be some sports superstar and have no idea what I'm talking about. But I, I have that connection with him automatically. And, um, you know, there's a girl who is reading the same books that I'm reading. Um, she has platinum blonde hair and um, seems super smart and funny. And, you know, I'm connecting with, with those people. There's a girl who's walking around in Crocs. And anybody who walks around in Crocs we're already on great terms, like purple jumpsuit, Crocs. I'm like, I'm sold, right? Like, that's great. But at the same time, there are people who are 
they're already too much for me. Now I said it before, I'm an irritable person and I can be a lot. So it's really hypocritical of me to say this, but there are some people here who are already a lot, trying to bend the rules a little bit, trying to you know be first in line, speak up, be the center of attention, and that tends to rub me the wrong way. And um, there's a couple of guys. I'm um, one of who has you know it's kind of like this big hairdo who is already you can tell he's a ten out of ten like big personality, and it scares me the idea of working with somebody like that. Maybe because I tend to have a big personality, and that you know that's too similar. Um, but also because people like that, they tend to think they're aligned with everyone. They're friendly to everyone. But when you're aligned with everyone, you're aligned with no one. And that's the sort of thing where I, if I can't tell where you are, if I can't tell who you're with and who you're against, then I don't know how we can work together. There's like my top couple like roster that I would want to draft on like a fantasy team of my tribe. And then there are the people that I would want. I'm already like, okay, if they're in my tribe, we can vote them out first. Um, there's a couple of them. And the ones who stand out as the ones that I'm like, oh, I really don't want them on my tribe or they're an easy target are the ones who have this millennials and Gen Z call it like the pick me vibe, you know, like, look at me, like, I'm going to stand here and like clear my chi in front of everyone or like I'm doing yoga at the airport or like we're all walking up an escalator and I'm going to take the stairs kind of vibe. It's like we get it we get it. Like you have to stand out or the ones that like will talk loudly so that we can all hear what they're saying. We're like, Oh, and so those I'm like ready to vote them out already. Like I'm already annoyed with them. And then I have my like internal Pondy BFFs who may might not even know, but like this one guy, he has long hair and glasses and his initials are BD. And like, I love him and I feel like we're best friends and we've never spoken to each other. And I'm just like, I hope he's on my tribe. But I also like have such a bleeding heart that I'm like, but if his name came up, I wouldn't want to vote him out. Cause I love him. I have to be honest. I think everyone's energy has been just exceptionally kind. Like, I think this is a ridiculously nice group of people. It just, it seems like the kindness really emanates from the, from the inside with, with everyone. I, again, like you mentioned, I haven't been able to talk with anyone, but I think sometimes you can just get a read of people's energies and auras and, I just get, I get the vibe that we're all going to get along until we don't, <laughs> you know, we're going to get along until it's time to drive a knife in someone's path. But I will say off the bat, I think I was so stoked coming into pregame to see just so many like powerful women. Like I'm just, I'm excited. I think some of my favorite alliances in survivor history are alliances of powerful women. I think it would be so cool to be a, a part of one in my own survivor journey. And I think I see some some awesome contenders here for that. And, and I just have to say, like, everyone has been has been just so nice. And and, you know, also, um, I think there's there's a familiar face in our in our crew. That's that's no surprise. And I love his story. I would love to work with him. Um, we'll see how it pans out. But I think on, on the whole, I'm just stoked. I'm excited. And this seems like a really great crew. And I, I hope it's a great season. We'll see. <laughs> I'm looking at some people. I don't mean to stereotype, but I'm kind of like, you're smart, aren't you? <laughs> like, I see you doing the Sudoku. Like, I get it. How fast are you doing it? Okay. Um, I'll take a smart person on my team. So I guess... In the beginning, I got a good good smiles from some people. You know, they're kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then some, especially the other girls, they're just, I mean, stone cold. And I'm like, come on, ladies, what's going on? So I feel like they're warming up. You know, we've been around each other and, you know, but it could be they're just following protocol right? Like we're supposed to be in lockdown mode. So good. But I'm like, give me a little love. Like, come on. So I don't know how it's going to play out. I'm excited and I'm so scared. <laughs> you know, the way I look at it is like, okay, we got three younger athletic guys that are probably supposed to be like the anchors there. So it's myself. Uh, I got nicknames for them, by the way. So let me know if you don't know who they are. It's my, myself, uh, Beefcake, the guy who like just walked out of the octagon. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, and then uh, like uh, Johnny Tsunami, or I've also been calling him a uh, uh, Surfer Frosty, if you remember, uh, you know, Survivor China. Uh, so those are the three guys. I think if they told me I'm yellow because I'm just a happy guy, I'm thinking that guy's red, the uh, the uh, the you the fighter, and then the surfer is blue. So we got that figured out. Then I'm looking and I'm seeing a couple smart guys here, a little couple brainiacs. You know, we got a uh, we got Lanky Blanky, you know, the the long spindly guy. And uh, we got uh, we got Young Blood, the guy who looks like he's still in high school, right? I think those are kind of supposed to be the, the smart guys of the season. So I feel like if I'm looking at it, 
None of those other guys jumped out as like super brainy. I think I might be the smartest out of the three. So I think those two are going to those two tribes. We're putting Lanky Blanky with our UFC fighter on red. And we're putting uh, Young Blood with the surfer on blue. Now, red is looking pretty stacked. How do you even that out? Well, you got to take the weakest person on the cast and you throw him in there. And uh, the guy I've been calling a uh, hotter Geo. So hotter Geo on that red team, that is complete. And then I look on that blue team. And if I think that, you know, they're spreading around the love when we look at me and Meat Shield, I feel like Unk, our uh, returning uh, castmate, is going to be heading over to the blue team. Who does that leave me with? It's me, Wayne's World, and uh, I've been calling him my husband. Hopefully my island husband, kind of Jesse and Dwight 2.0, you know? That's how I think. So I've been sending fives to those two guys as much as I can, right? In terms of the girls, a little bit less confident, not really 100% sure how they break down, but you know, that's, that's kind of my take on all of that. Fair enough? I actually have two people in mind already that I'm like, I really would love to work with. And, you know, we can't really talk to each other. So you're just kind of like, mm, you know, hi, giving little smiles here and there. And I, I feel like I chose them because they're kind of softer energy people. Um, like they, they don't seem like they're taking up a lot of space or really loud or crazy. And I feel like they may be the type of people who could get overlooked. And that's exactly what I want an alliance partner. Like I, for my secret alliance, I want somebody who people are like, ah, oh, that's just so-and-so. Like we're not too worried about them. They're not a threat. They're not a non-threat. They're just kind of there, you know? I want that person to be working with me behind the scenes the whole time. That would be great. And then there's like two people who I definitely got negative energy from. Not that they did anything particular, just kind of like, I'm getting stank face or I'm getting like, you know, squirmy, definitely don't trust you kind of energy. But the crazy thing is I literally was just writing in my little journal like about each person and I wrote that about them last night. And then today, like we did an experience together and I was like, oh, huh, they might be kind of cool. So I don't know. I feel like you just, you know, you never know. Like somebody asked me that one of the producers asked me, he was like, you know, how do you feel about this person or anybody? And I was like, oh, I don't like this person. I feel like they have this kind of energy. And then they, he was like, oh, just describe them to me. And I was like, no, no, I don't want to describe them. And he's like, no, just describe them. You never know. You may end up being best friends with them. And then literally today I saw this experience and I saw this person in a completely different light. And I was like, ah, oh, OK, maybe I do like them. But, you know, I'm still reserved because, you know, you got to go with that gut instinct. <laughs> I mean, I think both sides of the coin, there's people that I'm interested in working with and who I'm wary of. You know, I, it's being here is such a bizarre experience. It's kind of like mini nonverbal survivor. <laughs> and it's like every little thing you do, like who's taking a lot of notes, who's making eye contact. So for me, you know, I'm trying to like mirror what people are giving to me, but I definitely, you know, feel more inclined to work with people who make eye contact, smile, and kind of like don't shy away from that. And some people are, you know, kind of have a little bit more of a poker face or a little bit more stoic. And I think, you know, I want to be able to read people as much as I can out here. So that's already a problem. It makes me a little nervous. But you know, and also Bruce is here. Freaking Bruce is here. So I'm excited about that. I'm happy for him. I see a lot of fun in different characters for sure. I'm very good at reading people, I feel like. I've been in the restaurant industry and bartending for 12 years. So kind of comes with the being good at what I do. There's some that I feel like there's like a good blend of like extroverted people and introverted people just from like eye contact and the way they interact with like the staff members or the way like I'm watching everyone all the time. And I know they're probably watching me too. But yeah, I think there's a good blend of like extrovert introvert. And I just get a genuinely good vibe. I feel like a lot of the people are just like really good people. I feel like everyone's just a good person which is like you know in the old days you'd always have like villains or whatever it's a little different now but i just get a generally good vibe from it everyone well everyone has journals and stuff like that and i purposely didn't bring a journal because i didn't want to be so into my writing that i was missing things visually there's a girl that is i believe she's Indian descent. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not trying to be, you know, prejudiced or anything, but I just, all I have to go off is just like the first encounter. So she writes down a lot of notes about people, which makes me feel like she's a very like intuitive kind of like logistical thinker. You know, people 
don't think that maybe that's going to give it away, but it's the critical moments in which she writes that makes me like, hmm, okay, she's really recording like mannerisms or, you know, inter interactions or just eye contact, which is, I mean, 70% of communication is nonverbal. So we've been, there's been a lot of interaction, you know, it hasn't been talking, but there's been a lot of interaction. Somebody that I feel really good about was, um, I know his, uh, Initials are AC, very tall, Asian descent looking guy. I'm, I'm a big person with like, I don't believe in coincidences. And when they came to get us from the hotel, he was the only person on my floor. And then we had seats that were similar, you know, on the way here. And then every single boat ride, every single, everything that he's just been like this presence is always like in my group. And I'm just like, okay, I actually... I think that we can work together, you know? And it's not an obvious choice. I've been trying to make sure that whoever I do pick is kind of like a really, you know, kind of choice. Like, I don't want it to be like, oh yeah, no, Sabai is definitely going to be buddy buddy with them because that might happen. But just because I'm buddy buddy doesn't mean we're in an alliance, you know? And I kind of want to have kind of more of a covert, you know, without, <laughs> for lack of a better term, stealth RS kind of, you know, situation um, without it being a, uh, you know, obvious situation like Philip. But I definitely like the idea of having an alliance within the alliance, not really uh, like showboating it, not really you know, telegraphing it. That's what we call it. If you're passing a basketball, I don't want to telegraph any of my passes. I want everybody to kind of know, but nobody else does. And I need players that can blend in or that don't really seem like they would be my first pick to kind of go with me to this end. So um, AC, he's made my list so far. Hopefully we end up on the same drive. <laughs> I know we're all looking at each other, making a little eye contact here and there. We're sussing each other out, trying to determine, are you someone that's going to help my gameplay? Are you someone that I can connect with? And I've definitely gotten good vibes from some people like, okay, like I feel you, like, let's go, let's do this. We can work together. And then there are other people who I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't know what you think think of me I'm seeing maybe closed body language and so I'm reading those signals thinking okay maybe you're not someone that I can align with but honestly I really am gonna try hard even though I have these thoughts already happening I'm gonna try hard to come into this game and just say you know what let me get to know everyone let me give everyone a fair chance a fair shot because that's what's going to serve my game the best when I keep myself open to every possibility